If you've watched more than maybe two videos on this channel, you've probably come across one where I'm complaining about Google making automated changes in my client accounts. Well, great news. This video isn't going to be any different. Unfortunately, after turning off all of the auto applied recommendations that Google had made in my accounts and making sure that I didn't have any of the automatically created assets turned on at the campaign level, I still came across some automated changes that Google had made in my account. And that was based on the ad extensions or now known as ad assets. So after some digging, I figured out that the setting for that lives in a little different area. So in this video, I want to walk you through how to find out if Google is making automatically created ad assets or ad extensions for you and show you how to turn them off once and for all. We ran into this problem with an account where we had to completely reorganize the campaigns. We had a change in leadership. Some of the goals changed. A lot of the campaigns hadn't been updated in a while. So we decided to build out completely new campaigns, all new keyword research, new ad copy, all that good stuff. After we did that, we then went back and reviewed all of the ad extensions and some of the language had changed enough to a point where it made sense for us to just completely revamp all of them. So we removed all the associations with the ad assets to the campaigns that we built. And this is where we ran into the problem. While doing some routine reviews before uploading the new assets, I noticed that we had some new assets created for us by Google. So to find the automatically created assets, you need to go to the ads tab and click on assets. And I realized that this is the old interface for some reason. Our MCC is not on the new interface just yet. So in your accounts in the new interface, you'll actually just click on assets and then the assets list below it. So let's go ahead and do that. And I noticed the problem immediately when I came to this tab because there was data here. And since I'd removed the associations, there should not have been data here. Now you'll notice that there are account level site links, call outs, all that stuff, because those have been added since. But to find any of the automatically created assets, you can either look at the source column and see here we have advertiser. I'm not going to scroll down because we don't want to have to blur all that. But an easy way to filter for that is just come to filter, type in source, choose source. And then here you can check the box next to automatically created and click apply. Now I have removed all of the automatically created assets that were a bad fit for this account. So most of them are going to be the removed status. Now, before I show you how to turn these off, what I first want to do is talk about if you should turn them off and why we decided to remove them from these campaigns. Let's take a few different examples here. I'm going to start off with site links. I think when people think about ad extensions, one of the first ones that comes up are site links. Now, the reason we wanted to remove most of the site links that were added by Google is if I scroll down a little bit, there's a couple things here. First, there's a handful of site links that are listed at the account level, but none of these use any of the description lines. They are a very short snippet of text that sends somebody to a page on the site, but it doesn't have any further description. Additionally, aside from maybe download the app and view reviews. These are not the pages that we've seen the best performance from. News Center, Blog Center, Read the FAQ, those pages barely get any traffic and the traffic that does go there is not usually too high a value. So not only has Google not filled out all of the text that we would want to use, but they're also sending people to pages that we're not necessarily keen on sending traffic to. The next portion down here has some of the same issues because you can see that there are some that are just single lines. But even on top of that, Google has set these site links up at the ad group level. You can see that here in this column. Now, while that might not necessarily be a problem, those are also set up across all of the other ad groups. So each time we come in and review the data, it's going to be at a very high level. This just personally is not how I would prefer to set up site links. So these didn't make sense. Additionally, weirdly enough, Google actually created site links that have trademark issues in them. So that's not really going to help very much because we're not going to have that one shown nearly as often as the other ones. Even though they did fill out the description lines for this one, this still isn't ideal. If we scroll back up, there were some issues that we had with the callouts as well. This is going to be one of those scenarios that you have to take my word for it because we need to blur some of the pieces out. But funny enough, each of these different callouts is actually better as a site link than it is as a callout because each one of them actually is 
an action suggestion and callouts don't let you click on them. So these aren't really a good fit for callouts. Another asset that they created for us are structured snippets. And we removed these because the fields that they added were not meaningful benefit factors for our potential clientele. The one thing I do wanna call out is that they used a different category than what we have access to, highlights. This is not part of the dropdown for an advertiser created structured snippet. And I think it's kind of interesting that Google will allow itself to use highlights, but not you. So this brings me to another point. Review all of the different automated extensions that Google makes for you, because some of them might be a good fit and some of them might have tools that you don't have access to. For example, the business logo and business name are assets that Google created for us and we would just have to blur it out if I went to those pages, but we just left those. Those were fine. Those are the logo. That is the business name. So we're gonna stick with it. So just because it's automatically created and most of the examples that I've shown you here today are bad, doesn't mean that all of them will be bad. Just like any other suggestion that Google has for your ad copy, like I've talked about in some of the recommendations videos, always in your best interest to see what Google suggests and then take what you like, leave what you don't like but I still don't like Google making changes for me. So with that, let's talk about how you can turn off the automatically created ad extensions. As I mentioned earlier, this is the old interface, but I promise the new interface all in the middle is pretty much the same. It's only the menu over here that's different. So in either interface, to turn off automatically created ad extensions, you would come over here to the more button and click those three dots. Now go to account level automated assets. Here you'll see the automated assets that have been active during this time period. And we've got to take one more step to remove Google's ability to create automatically created assets by clicking more again, go to advanced settings. And here you'll be able to turn on or off any of the dynamic or automatically created assets. So in this account, you can see that I don't have these categorically turned off. I still have business names and logos on, Automated locations make sense to be on. So does longer ad headlines, which if we open this up, Google suggests that it can give you more visual prominence and typically results in more clicks. I don't see a reason why we should not have this on. Makes sense to me. If it's all the same text, why not have it be more prominent on the page? Same thing for seller ratings. These are an automated ad extension, so you probably want those on. It's the structured snippets, callouts, and site links that I'm not a fan of. So in each one of these, you would just open up the dropdown, click off as I have it here, and then hit save, and then you're done. Overall, I appreciate that Google is trying to help advertisers by filling out all of the ad extensions or ad assets as they call them now for all of the campaigns. That absolutely is best practice. You should have site links, callouts, structured snippets, as many ad extensions as you possibly can for each of your campaigns because it gives you more prominence on the results page and it can ideally suede a potential customer away from one of your competitors and into your business instead. So their intention is good, but in my experience, the automatically created assets just don't do exactly what I want them to do. Again, I am a full-time paid media advertiser. This is my job. I'm supposed to focus on making ads as relevant as possible. If you're a small business owner and you just do not have time to go through all the bells and whistles, this might be a great option for you, but it's still important for you to know how to turn them off. If you start to notice messaging getting into your campaigns that you don't want there, or if you start to see Google promoting certain pages in a way that doesn't really make sense. So hopefully by now with this video, the one on automatically created assets and the other on auto apply recommendations that I mentioned both of those in the intro. Now we should be in a position where Google is not making changes for us around our ad text and we control all of that ourselves. If you have any additional questions about automatically created ad assets, auto apply recommendations, automatically applied assets, or anything else in the Google ecosystem, feel free to leave us a note in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.